Here we have our fox moss brains and about a cup of bath temperature water. And a failure can be a star. They can be so mad as and a bit of mystique. Been a gun so hard to find. This hide has been in this brains for about 36 hours. I put it in overnight and it hadn't seemed to really absorb all the brains. And the next day, stuff came up and I couldn't get to it. So uh, it smells really bad. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to leave it in there that long. I'm gonna start, oh man, this smells bad. Okay, uh -oh. I'm gonna start by just trying to wring it out. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, that smells so bad. As I'm working this, I'm noticing that patches of hair are just coming out. So it's obvious that I ruined my hide by leaving it in the brains for so long. Since I failed to make a fur, I thought I'd go back to step one and try and buck this hide and then see if I can make some brain tanned fox hide. Of course, I don't have any brains left, so I might have to use something else. There have been several people to tell me that Dahlia tubers are edible, which um, is certainly new to me. This is where there was a nice big dahlia last year, and it's kind of dormant now. So I want to grab some of these roots here, and we'll see if these are edible. And what have we here? It smells just like a dahlia, and... It has the texture of like water chestnut. It tastes like dahlia's smell. A little bit bitter, and tastes rooty, earthy. still tastes like a Dahlia smells, which is really interesting, and it's kind of, um, it's almost like a little spicy. It's not spicy, but it's got a little, it's got a little kick to it. The source was saying that, uh, different Dahlias taste differently, and that the heirloom varieties are, are more the ones that you want to eat. I suppose I'm gonna have to cut up the rest of these Dahlias and put them in my soup here. We'll see if I can mask them with all these other flavors and well, my goose fat has gone rancid. I guess I should have just canned it. I thought it would last. God, it smells like putrid. Uh, but there's a lot of oil in there, so I'm gonna uh, see if I can cut up an old t-shirt and make a lamp out of I'm gonna tell you a little bit about managing your compost that you've started. As the season goes on, you just keep adding layers on top of what you've already got going and you wanna make sure that they kinda of stay half green, half brown, so you keep your nitrogen and carbon balanced. And you also wanna keep that moisture where it's like a wet sponge, it's already been wrung out. So don't let too much rain get on it and if it starts to dry out, water a little bit. And the last component of the composting is oxygen, which as the pile breaks down, it compresses and that compression suffocates all that good stuff in there that's going to work. Once a week I go by and I just poke it full of holes, which lets the air get down in there. To do this, you're gonna need something real pointy. I'm using an old hoe that the handle broke off on. So you can see here how much it's already broken down since you saw it last. And this is also with being added on heaps of stuff. Someone walked by here last week and was laughing that I've got someone's sweater in here. That sooner or later will just be a zipper. So you just take it, stab it down in there, and then give it a little twist, which opens up your little air pocket. This is where it's really important that your cardboard was wet. You use dry cardboard, you're not gonna be able to puncture it with your tool. You can also tell if your compost is working well because your stick will warm up as you do this. So that's a good sign that things are breaking down in there. 